Yeah. Free beer and hot wings in the morning. Grand Rapids rocks all day. 97.9 GRD rocks. Mostly cloudy today and a high of 50. It's 50 now, so this is as good as it gets. Perfect baseball weather. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Baseball man had oh. the fever. Oh, for God's sake. Every time, man. Just Can't you time. ever just cue it up to, like, something normal? This is exactly why we didn't give them headphones. So they wouldn't know what an embarrassment this is. I know. And now they're <laughs> so confused. Mm. Uh, it, Justin's playing uh, an episode of The Lone Ranger from 1912 <laughs> uh, yeah. on radio. Oh, now I know this song. Yeah. Cam Gibson, Blaze Salter of the West Michigan Whitecaps. Hi, guys. What's How are we going doing? on, boys? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see Cam. Good to meet Blaze. Yeah. yeah. You guys were high school teammates also? No, or just no, from no. the same college, area? Just college. Both played, college, at, played at Michigan State. State. Yep. Uh, but grew up in the same area, right? Yep. I'm yeah. from Bloomfield Hills. Cam's from Gross Point. So okay. we kind of okay. grew up, yeah. you know, playing different sports against each other. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool that we were able to go to college together. And it's pretty cool how we're, you know, able to be here playing the same team professionally. Were you rivals? No, or not, was it, I mean, not yeah, really. Been, right? We, I mean, not really. I mean, I've known him basically my whole life. We've always been because I don't know if you know, but his grandpa's. Bill Freehan, my dad oh, is my dad. Okay, so okay. we were so always you, around the ballpark, the always around spring training. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. His head, is, it's been the same size his entire life. So. <laughs> you grew into it, Blaze? Yeah, when I was okay. younger, it was uh, it was abnormally large. Um, <laughs> bobblehead. <laughs> yeah, I used, cool. to, I, used to, yeah, I used to get the nickname Bobblehead and stuff. And <laughs> I, I mean, it relate. still is, it's, but... Mm-hmm. I've gotten bigger, yeah. so yeah. like I've kind of yeah. grown into yeah. it. But there was times when I was younger when I was... It was a really funny story. I was in I was in fourth grade. I was trying on football helmet for the first time, and I went down. They like call us on the PA. They're like, "All right, every fourth grader come down for football helmet." So I go to try on, and it was the biggest helmet they had, <laughs> and they couldn't get it off. And they tried everything. So they're pouring oh, no. water down it. Oh, oh they, and geez. So they ended up Let's having, to get, up. They ended up oh, having to get like a little saw and saw it down. They had to the saw the helmet off yeah. of your head, just oh like God. the plastic part, oh and then God. split it apart. So oh, it's too bad that's I've not had, on I, film. I've had a I've had a a long history with uh, getting into helmets. That's an air, that's an age when you're starting to be sensitive about stuff like that yeah. too. Like yeah, you know, I've, I, yeah, just it was tough. Were you, you always, using you're like, what six five now? Yeah, six five. Yeah. So were you were you always the big kid? Yeah, it, like, I, I wasn't like as tall as I am now. When I was growing up, I was just I was a that tall. One, that makes no, sense. I was like no, no, I didn't mean it. <laughs> I didn't mean it that sense. But like he, Hot Wings might have let you slide, but yeah. Cam was looking at you like you were yeah, crazy. Yeah, Cam was going to, but as Cam soon as I got verification from Cam, I go, all right. <laughs> Your poor mother when you flew out of the womb at six five two thirty five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, uh, I'd like to meet both halves of her. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. Yeah. it was uh, yeah, it was tough, but no, it was it. Both my, I have two younger brothers too that are that are that are big as well. So it, it's been a, uh, it's been a uh, fun journey of so, growing up. Like it, I, I assume when it's not that long ago that you were you, you were a baby, but like when you have kids now, you mm-hmm. go to the pediatrician and they give you that printout. Like mm-hmm. oh, your kids in the oh yeah. I have a kid who's in the fifteenth uh, percentile for uh, height, twenty mm-hmm. fifth for weight, and he's uh, above the one hundredth percentile for head size. So like you, I mean, it, I think I was in the three hundred percent time for head. I, I had to bend something uh, higher than yeah, the hundred. You were alone. It's yeah. like your, your parents started using the clear on you as soon as you came out. You're going to be a ball player, son. You're going to play baseball. Just yeah. put it on his head. Yep. Yeah. It, with yeah, with your grandpa being Bill Freehand from the '68 yep. Tigers and stuff. I mean, is it? Were you des? I guess Cam for a degree too. Though your dad, a two sports star, obviously, mm-hmm. and and you know, stuff like that. But. There's a is there a pressure to pick baseball, you know, or, um, or did you just naturally gravitate to it anyway? No, it was one of those things where I was growing up. Obviously, my grandpa, when I was from when I was like one until I was eight, was the head coach of Michigan for baseball. Sure. So I grew up, you know, around the game and stuff like that. And obviously, I saw guys like that Michigan that was like Mike Matheny played there at that time. He was the mm-hmm. coach of the Cardinals now, and I saw guys like that. But I mean, I played growing up, played every sport basically. I played yeah. football, hockey, basketball, and all those. But I think it was. Once I became a freshman in high school, I realized that you know I actually had a shot of going somewhere in baseball, and yeah. I think no one really pressured me to do so. Obviously, with my you know background of baseball, that people would assume that you know my grandpa or my dad mm-hmm. or something like that would push me towards it. But no, it was kind of on me that just, yeah. just kind of happened. What is the best statistical year you've had at any level where you were keeping stats? Because I just remember it just popped into my head as you're talking about specializing. My nephew, 
um, in the Class D uh, made it to the state finals, and they ran up against a kid who was hitting like 705 on the season. <laughs> it was like slow pitch softball, yes. except it's you know. Yeah. And he played in a good league in Detroit, and he just they're like, yeah, they, he hits everything. Well, and every time they pitched to him, he was driving it into the gap or putting a home run. I mean, I mean, I don't really, I don't think they really keep yeah. stats in not until high school. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that. But my, were you the kid in little league when you come up, Cam? That all the other kids are back up, back up, and the and the kids that were scared who were out there picking shamrocks and throwing rocks at each other surely, are standing by the fence yeah. with, the, I mean, with one glove case. over their crotch yeah, and their hand over their face, yeah. trying not to get killed. That like, was, can this game end that's so what I can I, go to the snack bar? That's what I did in right field when monsters like you guys came up. Mm-hmm. That was kind of the case. All the time. There was one game where I had I had three home runs already, and you know I I, st- I was because I was also one of the the. Taller kids, yeah, but I mean, not like Blaze, right? But I no, stepped no. up, normal size, uh, yeah, yeah. You weren't and, they, and they tried to intentionally walk me. And my, I looked at my coach, and you said, Right, you told me to swing at it, so yeah. they they threw the first intentional walk pitch, and I hit an, another one out. You, <laughs> you, <laughs> you just step forward, you step a over the plate, just, and just reach out, yeah, because it's probably a high schooler umping, he doesn't want to call you out when you uh, mash yeah. one over the fence, yeah, he's not going to do much about it. That kid is still crying right now. <laughs> Where I grew yeah, up, he they, never it, got over it was that. a small town. Walked. We had two diamonds, and the main diamond had a regular fence, mm-hmm. you know, an aluminum fence. Mm-hmm. But it was set for, because they also played softball, fast pitch, and, and everything else there. So in Little League, no one was hitting it. So most most of the big players would barely hit it onto the grass. And then, like mm-hmm. I said, someone, one of you guys would hit it, and I would run for an hour, get the ball, <laughs> turn around and throw it to the cutoff man, and see uh, guys already home. you lumberjacks mm-hmm. rolling yeah. around third, walking yeah. into home, <laughs> yeah. high-fiving my mom. God, this sucks. Yeah. That's why you got to play should, basketball. Should have done what I did and ignore everything the coach told me. See a guy running to home and throw it as hard as I can <laughs> and watch it bounce just beyond second base. Yeah. <laughs> and then watch my team hate me and my coaches pull their hair out. That's you, the way you, you do it. You should have seen me. All I would do, I knew I could run faster than I could throw a ball. So, so would I would run just it home. run it home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> man, did I hate having teammates yeah. like you. Yeah. That guy doesn't even know how to play. No, no I didn't. <laughs> I At least I knew how it. to play. I just I could couldn't. only throw it eight feet. <laughs> I, what do you I still want? can. <laughs> My parents, when they were supposed to teach me about baseball, were fighting and divorcing. <laughs> right. oh. I know all about that. <laughs> they sold their Cam Gibson. I could play divorce like no one else. <laughs> <laughs> the white caps. You want to see me pick sides? Yeah. Let me go. <laughs> I'll throw clothing. Uh, I was just watching, uh, it's uh, not the most recent episode, but HBO Real Sports had a thing about um, Rick Ankiel. Mm-hmm. About, uh, I don't know if you remember mm-hmm. when he was with, uh, you guys would have been pretty young, but when he was with the Cardinals, he was a, you know, you know the story. He's a pitcher. Yeah, yeah. He's a pitcher. I mean, he was like he rookie of the year. Yep. He was just a dominant pitcher, and he gets to the first game of the first round of the playoffs in the National League for the Cardinals, and he's their starting guy on the first day of the playoffs. So he's obviously, you know, someone they're counting on. He's cruising. He gets to the third inning and forgets how to throw his curveball, and he had one of those big looping curves, great mm-hmm. control on it. But guys would, you know, we're not telling you anything, but for the audience, guys <laughs> bail out. Like, they're going to get killed, and then it hits the catcher's glove right in the mm-hmm. middle of the plate. And uh, he's forgot how to throw. And one of the things he talked about was uh, how painful it was the next few times he tried because he had the same thing in game three or four when he pitched again, and then one more time, and then the first couple of appearances the next year, and then it's over. And he said it was hard because the culture in baseball is none of his teammates would even look at him. Like, it was, uh, like he had mm-hmm. a disease mm-hmm. that was catching. Have you ever seen a guy where all of a sudden they forgot how to do something that's a basic fundamental on yeah. a, t- a teammate? Yeah, there's like this thing in, that catchers and sometimes, uh, you know, some infielders, infielders get. It's called like the yips almost. That's what, where that's you what see, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like what you're talking about. So you'll see a catcher sometimes that, you know, he'll like he'll be a striker or whatever, he'll try to throw it back to the mound. He can like barely get his arm to work. Yeah. And it's more mental than everything. Like they you can throw the ball to second. Him. Yeah. You feel so bad for They them. can throw the ball mm. to second. They can do everything right. But if they have to think about something, yeah. if they have to think about doing it, they can't do it. Steve it's Sachs, all right. Steve Sachs, Sachs Chuck Knobloch forgot yeah. how to – they were all pro uh, fielders. Knobloch you know? couldn't throw the ball to first. Yeah, but yeah. they showed uh, – I had never seen a catcher where, uh, like what you're talking mm-hmm. about, Blaze, where he couldn't throw it. They showed a clip of um, – I think it was Mackie Sasser from maybe the 80s. I think he was on the 86 Red Sox team mm-hmm. that went pretty far. And he, he was that. It was in a game. And um, he goes to throw it back to the pitcher, and he had apparently mm-hmm. been doing well enough the rest of the game. And as soon as he started, and it's like, just, just, just let go, man. Yeah. Just let go. And the runner starts going to second. You yeah. hear the announcer, oh, there it goes again. Looks like Mackie Sasser. And, oh, no, his yeah. brain broke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that, I mean that, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. You feel, I, I mean, um, you feel bad for guys like that, too, because, like, it's – 
it's not on them too. It's it's kind of like all in their head too. When they start thinking about it all, it's just like mm-hmm. yeah. all downhill from there because it's just tough to watch, you know. And, and even oh. and so Ankiel, to for those who don't know that story, he ends up going back and uh, Tony Larusa and his general manager said, "Hey, let's you're you're a tremendous athlete. Want to try to make as an outfielder?" And he comes back and eventually yep. has a pretty good productive. <laughs> yeah, like, he's good. Like yep. ten year career as a as an outfielder, which yep. is really remarkable. Mm-hmm. One of the best outfield arms in the entire game too. Oh yeah, when he that comes was back. Mm-hmm. that was what what was crazy. Cam is yeah they they showed highlights where guys would hit it to him and they'd try to you know tag up and grab third on him and he would just mow him yeah. down. But if he mm-hmm. had to come in and throw it. 60 feet, six inches on a curveball. He was going to bounce That's it up crazy. there. Yeah. But here it is all this time later. He goes back and he has a, a really good career. And he talked about it. He still, he said he mourns it like a death in the family I'm about sure. what he missed out on. And mm-hmm. even his mom, she starts crying. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm so proud of him for making it back, but I'm so sad for him and mm-hmm. what he lost. But there's no explanation. Wow. There's no closure on yeah. it. So right. that's yeah. it. You just have, well, I guess, you know, my my brain went nuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whitecaps at home today against Lake County. First pitch at 635 tomorrow against Lake County. That's a late afternoon game. And then Sunday at 1 o'clock. And then home for three more against Fort Wayne on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Okay, now I asked you guys beforehand, would you rather play in weather like this where it's kind of 50 and it looks like it's uh, 10 o'clock at night, even in the middle of the day, or the dog days of summer in August uh, when it's about 90 degrees and you're playing an afternoon matinee so the schools or so that the, you know, local clubs can bring the kids out well i mean for me it's it's only about my hands on both of those types of days because i don't wear gloves when i hit so if it's 95 i'm and i'm so just sweating profusely okay my hands get all sweaty and getting the grip Mm -hmm. it's hard to get a grip but when it's cold like today my hands are numb and so it's also tough to get a grip on the bat so i'm looking for that happy medium where it's about 70 sunny Mm -hmm. and uh you know that's really rare to come by right now around but, here, and that's fun. Right? If you don't have yeah. that, you'd have to choose this because mm-hmm. dog days of summer are disgusting. Yeah, like, <laughs> super humid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would much rather have this. Yeah, I yeah. I sweat like him. I sweat so much. I could be sitting down on the bus and and I could just be dripping sweat. Your natural so state. I'm a natural yeah. sweater. I got. Yeah. I have a lot of hair on my chest and stuff, so I have a natural sweater. <laughs> right. So I'm yeah. basically right now wearing two shirts. Yeah. yeah. So you look at him, he'll have his shirt off, and it's a sight. Uh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. It's gotten better. Um, <laughs> why, why no gloves? Just a, it's, it's obviously just what you liked. Yeah, it's just what you, I've I'm always done. I'm sure you tried it. I, it's what I've always done. Do you people know? try to get them? Cam, you got to wear some gloves. No, they, they usually... It's sometimes, pretty, pretty rare now, right? Yeah, you don't really see it a lot. Sometimes people will look at me and they'll go, and I'll look at them back and go, yeah? They go, you never, <laughs> you never, you don't like them? Yeah. Like gloves? I go, no, it's just a personal preference. I'd like to feel, feel yeah, the bat. Feel the wood. Who's the la- yeah. Is there a major leaguer that... Uh, Mac, Vlad- Mac Vladimir Carpenter Guerrero. still does it. Yeah. Vladimir Guerrero. Uh, Vlad- that was, uh, that's who I was thinking. Guerrero. He was pretty good. Yeah. He was all right. Yeah. Was His son's decent. playing in this league, actually, too. Really? He's playing for Lansing, so it's kind of... It'll be we played him in spring training a few times, so it'll be cool to play him this uh this season. Is there someone like when another team I'm sure you know when another team when a top draft pick who's supposed to be the next ace pitcher for whatever team, mm-hmm. when you know he's coming up on the schedule as hitters, do you do you look forward to that measuring stick? Yeah, I mean it's I think it's pretty cool. It's always cool to measure up against guys that are, you know, sought after prospect wise. I mean me and Cam I know mm-hmm. take it as a challenge in a way. You need to go up to the plate, you know, it's it's almost like a win-win in the situation, you know, like that guy is a, is a top prospect. Like if he gets you out, it's like, you know, he's a good pitcher. Like he's got good stuff. But if you get a hit, it's almost like, all right, you know, like I, I see where, I see where I'm at. Yeah. Ex- Some, somebody's going to notice. That, exactly. Right? If you do well and a guy's there, it's always a good thing. It's like in college too. If you did well in front of scouts and the, when they were there, you know, yeah, you got an opportunity to play mm-hmm. at this level. So it's always good to face guys like that because it's good for you. And it's also good for maybe your future. Cam mm-hmm. Gibson, yeah. Blaze Salter with us. Now, both of you guys grew up around big leaguers mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. seeing big leaguers probably not a big deal i would assume at this point that yeah. it's so run of the mill but have you seen guys where somebody comes down like current big leaguer comes down for like a rehab assignment you're facing a, a great pitcher or a, or a hitter where you know this guy's maybe the starting <laughs> shortstop in the all-star game mm-hmm. and now he's rehabbing have you seen anyone uh, where you would go so far as say starstruck uh, if not for you maybe a teammate who didn't have a chance to grow up around I actually, Stadium, I, actually America. Have, I actually have a really funny story about that. So last night, Cam's dad actually came to, was at our game. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're in the clubhouse after, and our roommate, his name's Cole Bimley, he's from Saskatchewan, Canada. So mm-hmm. he's from way up there. And yeah. there's not a lot of, like, 
stars and stuff up where he's from. He lives right? on a farm. He lives yeah. on a farm yeah. in the middle of nowhere. Right. Great kid. And this is the biggest city he's ever been to. Yes. Yeah. He's your prototypical Canadian farmer. Just, yeah. Wow. Okay. So okay. he comes. He can drink a 24 pack. And exactly. still be yeah. Sober, yeah. He's right? good with that. Yeah. You want him on your team with that aspect. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, 14. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he. Uh, Super strong. Yes. So Cam's dad comes in there. And, uh, you know, he's just talking to Cam. He says hello to me. You're We're just talking. Me yeah, yeah, just talking about the yeah. game. And then after Cole, our roommate, comes up to me, he's like, man, that was – I'll do the Canadian accent. Mm-hmm. Like, man, that was pretty cool. You know, I've, I don't see many uh, MLB guys up where I grow up. So <laughs> right? when he walked in, I, I kind of got really starstruck. So That's, it was like – Is that the same thing he said the first time he saw a mascot? Or we went to the biggest building. river rat I've ever seen. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen a pig in an inner tube, eh? <laughs> <laughs> when we played in New York City last year, he was pretty rattled too. Really? Yeah, he just, I mean, he's just a small town kid that, you know, hasn't really seen much, and it's pretty cool for him to get to experience mm-hmm. all this stuff. Mm-hmm. We, uh, I, I do uh, some college football on the side, some play-by-play, and I worked with uh, a guy named Curtis Conway who played with four teams, and he grew up in South Central and then went to USC, mm-hmm. and he, he's, he's a smart guy. Like, if you meet him now, he's been retired for a number of years, but he told me a story one of the first times I met him, and he said, so I get drafted by the Bears. He didn't want to get drafted by the Bears. And so that was already the story right away. And I'd asked him what it's like to be on the negative side of, you know, the newspapers Mm -hmm. when you're an athlete and your side of the story is not out there. So it was the story already was, is is he going to hold out? And he held out a little bit longer. He got some bad advice from his agents. So the Chicago media has already turned on him. Well, then they go to training camp and they're training on the north edge of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't see downtown. And he goes, I was ignorant. I didn't know what Chicago was. I knew it was in the Midwest. So I expected cornfields and no (laughs) city. So after about three weeks of training camp, he says, F it and gets on a plane and goes home and he's ready to quit or sit out the season. And now his grandma says, son, you're an idiot. Um, (laughs) Chicago's a big city, but also our family's counting on you. Um, you know, uh, this is an opportunity you have to get out of South Central L.A. and go and make it. And so he reluctantly goes back. He's getting slaughtered in the Chicago Sun-Times and the uh, what's the other? The, the Tribune. The Tribune. Tribune. I mean, he's the, the blown pick, a wasted pick. He's an idiot. He's selfish. He's a diva. So he gets back. Their first preseason game is in Green Bay. So they take a bus from the northern suburbs of Chicago to Green mm-hmm. Bay, and he's like, oh, my God, it only gets worse. <laughs> this is terrible. Yeah, there's not much in, there's in, not much in Green two. Bay. So no, then no. they play that game, and then they all go uh, back to the normal Bears facility, and all of a sudden he realizes, oh, my God, this is an amazing, thriving city. There's a I skyline. Just, I just was too dumb to know, but he couldn't go back and you know hold a press conference and go, hey, media, it's not that I'm a diva. I'm stupid. <laughs> I didn't look south. Just, you I can was, see the skyline you know, from Indiana on a well, clear day. Yeah, I mean, he couldn't see it when he flew in? I don't it's know. It's right there. I don't know. I was yeah, born without I mean, the ability to look up or You'd be south. flying right through the middle of the city. Yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't comfortable asking him these questions. Yeah. You know. yeah. I'm not a Bears right fan there. either. So. Right. Yeah. Makes Jeez. sense, right? Typical Bear. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of the yeah. Bears either. Uh, game tonight against Lake County. 635 is the first pitch. Uh, you guys both guarantee a home run for a sick kid. I'll name a sick kid if you need me to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, don't put that. That'd be tough. Me, you know? <laughs> I, I would feel terrible after <laughs> yeah. the game, too. Have you ever had anyone? That doesn't really happen, does it? No, I don't, hit a really home run think, me? I don't really think my mom and dad do. do it. Do they? My grandma will text me out of the blue saying, like, hey, like, watching the game, and I hope you hit a home run. I was like, I can't promise anything. <laughs> well, I'll try my best. How about I just hit for the cycle? Yeah, I'll, I'm just, it, right? I'll, I'm just gonna try to get a single. You might not know this, <laughs> yeah. but we actually have two sick kids. Yep. And they're in the hallway. Here today. <laughs> and one of them is Free Beer and one of them is Steve. They have Gilbert's disease. <laughs> yeah. 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 Steve. Uh, that's uh, not a joke. Yeah, one day right they will yeah. turn yellow. Yeah, they're yeah. dying. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we each are diagnosed with a syndrome that only 3 to 12% of the population gets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's. Uh, uh, a lot of jaundice, oh, except babies. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. babies yeah. get this uh, and grow yeah. out of it. But they're it's sexually Benjamin. transmitted. But <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. why they both These have guys it. are like, I yeah. don't know what's true about. They this. got it from docking <laughs> nipples. <laughs> oh man, a lot of uh, fully clothed sixty nine going on. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cam, I saw uh, an article about you where it said you went back in the off season, kind of changed your approach at the plate. Yeah, uh, less power, trying to embrace your speed a little bit more. Yeah, what is the the how do you get to the point where you go, I want to do this, or I need to do this, whatever it is, and then what do you do to kind of break down a habit that you've had for a long time? Well, 
my dad always asked me because when I played um, in college, I was more of a contact hitter, okay. which I'm trying to go back to, mm-hmm. and that's when I when I played at my best. And he mm-hmm. said, "When did you play your best?" And I said, "Probably in college when I wasn't trying to do too much." Mm-hmm. And so uh, we went back and we thought about you know what I did then, what what difference it makes now, and I said, "You know what? I think these past couple of years I've just been trying to do a lot at the plate. Like I'm trying to go get the game." rather than let the game come to me and mm-hmm, use mm-hmm. my abilities. And so we were sitting in the cages one day, and I said, what about, you know, like Pete Rose? You know, remember how he swung? Mm-hmm. And I got down in the Pete Rose-type stance, and he threw, like, five in a row. Yeah. And it was just foom, 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 like, three in a row, just, like, line drives up the middle, other way. Right. And we kind of sat there, we're like, all right, I guess we'll just keep working with this. Yeah. This, is, <laughs> this looks like it's going pretty well. And so the entire off season, whenever we would go hit, we would work on that. And, you know, I'm transferring that into my game right now. And it's already actually going pretty well because the, the power's there. Yeah. I just have to put a good swing on the ball. Yeah. I can't mm-hmm. try and over overdo it and then, you know, have a huge mess up and just hit a pop-up. Right, yeah. Just let the game come to me and, and use my legs, which is my strong suit. So is that mental or are you going so far as to shorten your swing Get the bat through the zone quicker. We're about to the end of my baseball knowledge, but but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> no, you're like, actually doing pretty well. Is it a complete, yeah. uh, you know, throw out everything and start from scratch, or it's, is it small tweaks and mostly mental approach? Yeah, it's 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 actually a bit of both because you know you want to have the 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 swing shorter and you want to have less movement and and the mental aspect of it. You're sitting there and you're thinking, you know, this guy's going to throw me this pitch at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's an OO count, look mm-hmm. for a fastball right down the middle. Mm-hmm. Don't try and swing at the ball that's an inch off the plate. You just have to let the game come to you. Mm-hmm. And last year, that's what I was doing. I was just swinging like the zone was as big mm-hmm. as a beach ball. Yeah, you know, you're going to go get it. Yeah, that's not very smart. And this year, I've already had a lot of talks with, with our coaches, and they're saying, hey, you know, you're know, you quick. Get on base. The power is going to come, mm-hmm. but play your game and – and if you're going to swing early in the count, swing at that number one pitch that you know you can hit over the wall. Makes sense. Hell yeah. Makes sense. Now, I know some of the players that have been in with us before, particularly Joey Pancake and Ross Kivett, have told us that if you guys want uh, instruction on batting, the crowd always has good ideas <laughs> right? for right. what you should do with your yeah. swing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, so no. that's something to keep in mind. I don't know if you They're guys They're probably the best hitting coaches. Like, yes, yes. <laughs> listen yeah. for the word yeah. idiot, and yeah. then whatever follows that, do that. Basically, whatever so, swear yeah. word after Gives that. Give a yeah. home run, you moron. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. usually yeah. Yeah. I exactly. go up and I say, I, I better do this. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you listen yeah, to little a, kids yeah. trying to say, hey, get me a hit and stuff. Yeah. For, mm. Yeah. At least you can chalk that up to being precocious and uh, not knowing any better. Yeah, but it's yeah. the adult who oh, yeah. didn't even make it to American Legion ball telling you how <laughs> no. to get the bat. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he probably blew it out in middle school or something yeah. like that. Right. Dude who's right. covered in nacho yeah. cheese along the third baseline. <laughs> yeah, but that yeah. kid, that man is that way because he didn't get yelled at by yep. a ball player yep. when he was a kid. Nobody what told to him how to do it. Is walk over to him and go on a racist tirade. <laughs> <laughs> that will fix a man. Yeah. Can you imagine tonight, Cam walks over to a little kid and goes, want to see me beat the hell out of your old man? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why don't you shut your face? you got to scare him. That's how baseball used to be. Yeah, yeah right? right? Good days. Well, Ty Cobb, man. Right? right? No, Seriously. That old story about him hitting that crippled guy? That's and the guy exactly goes, what Ty, was... don't hit him. He's crippled. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have mouthed off if he can't back it up. That's <laughs> what I was uh, oh, man. envisioning in my head. I don't head. know if it's true, but I've heard it enough that I believe it. Oh, yeah. it is. Yeah, it is uh, Blaze Salter, Cam Gibson, good to see you guys. Good to meet you, Blaze. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look forward to seeing you and uh, continued success, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having us on. Caps tonight. Go see him. 635 first pitch. Whitecapsbaseball.com. See you later. We're all leaving, too. Bye. Bye.